Hello students, hope you are doing well. This is Suryam, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharmaceutics, Vishnu Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research. Today, we are here to discuss the measurements of surface and interfacial tension. The surface and interfacial tensions will be determined by different methods. Those methods are capillary rise method, Dunoy ring method, this Dunoy ring method is also known as detachment method, drop weight and drop count method. This drop weight or drop count method is also known as stalagmometer. Stalagmometer method. Maximum bubble pressure method or bubble pressure method. Maximum bubble pressure method and will help me plate method so these are the different uh, methods are there to determine the surface and interfacial tension in this methods especially the capillary rise method and will help me methods these are the methods only determine the surface tensions and remaining this Dunoy ring method, drop weight and drop count method and maximum bubble pressure method, they are used to determine both surface tension and interfacial tension. Drop weight and drop count method also used for to determine the surface and interfacial tension and maximum bubble pressure method is also used for surface and interfacial tension. Let us discuss these different methods in detail one by one. The first one is capillary rise method. So in this method, generally we will be having a capillary and in this capillary, the due to the surface tension, the sample will be rises upward direction. And when the countering force is attacked to the same liquid sample, then again, it will be going to stop. Thus, we can calculate or we can determine the surface or uh, surface tension of the particular sample the principle involving in this capillary rise method is when we are uh, when <coughs> the principle involving in this capillary rise method is when a capillary tube is placed in a liquid the liquid will raises in the tube due to surface tension acting along the circumference of the tubes contact angle Based on this principle, the capillary rise method is going to work. So that means when we, if you observe this diagram, we need to dip a capillary into the sample like this. So when the sample, uh, when the capillary is introduced into a sample, then when we introduce the capillary into the sample, then the sample or the liquid will raises in the capillary tube. This happens because of surface tension. The surface tension is because of this happens because of the surface tension as we discussed in the previous lectures the surface tension is happens because of involving of the adhesive forces here the adhesive force will be acts in between the liquid sample and the wall of the capillary tube this force will be known as adhesive forces because of this adhesive forces the surface tension will be increases because of the surface tension is increases the sample in the tube will raises in this capillary rise method there are the force will acts in two different directions first direction is 
अपवर्ड डायरेक्शन एंड द सेकेंड डायरेक्शन इज डाउनवर्ड डायरेक्शन एट दिस अपवर्ड डायरेक्शन द सरफेस टेंशन विल बी मोर बिकॉज ऑफ द अदेसिव फोर्सेस बिकॉज ऑफ द अदेसिव फोर्सेस दिस डाउनवर्ड डायरेक्शन एट दिस डाउनवर्ड डायरेक्शन द काउंटरिंग फोर्स विल बी इन्वॉल्विंग द काउंटरिंग फोर्स सो द काउंटरिंग फोर्स विल बी इन अ फॉर्म ऑफ ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्स ड्यूरिंग दिस डाउनवर्ड डायरेक्शन दिस ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्स और काउंटरिंग फोर्स इज कंप्लीटली डिपेंड्स ऑन द डेंसिटी ऑफ डेंसिटी ऑफ द सैंपल विच वी आर ट्राइंग टू डिटरमाइन let us discuss what happens at upward direction and what happens at downward direction in detail the first at upward direction in this process first thing we need to do here is we need to clean and dry the capillary tube and in the second process now fix it to a stand and attach to a movable microscope to observe certain height of the liquid up to which height it is raised and also to observe the contact angle so this contact angle is known as the contact between contact angle is known as the contact between the liquid sample liquid samples the contact angle is known as the contact between contact between the liquid sample and the walls of capillary tube capillary tube and this is denoted by theta now dip the capillary into the liquid sample now note down the contact angle theta and the appropriate height of the liquid which it is raised up to after this process after this process calculate the density of the sample and this density of the sample will be calculated by specific gravity bottle specific gravity bottle this specific gravity bottle is also known as pycnometer and also known as density bottle by help of specific gravity bottle pycnometer or density bottle we can calculate the density of the particular liquid sample which we are going to use in the experiment now we need to consider the force which is acts during the rising upward direction and the circumference of the liquid a that is consider as gamma cos theta this is equation one in this gamma is surface tension of liquid cos theta or theta is the contact angle between 
liquid and the wall of capillary and this is in case of a single circumference but in this experiment the capillary rise method will be moving the rising of the liquid will be moving upward direction and when the countering force is attacking to this upward moving force then we need to consider here two circumferences as per this this capillary will be having two circumferences hence the equation one can be written as two pi r gamma cos theta here two pi r is inside and outside circumference of capillary tube again cos theta is refers the contact angle and also gamma is refers as surface tension of the liquid the contact angle contact angle of water sample theta will be zero so if you substitute the theta value in this equation in case of water sample by using this equation we can calculate the surface tension of water sample in case of other samples other samples or other liquid samples the contact angle will not be zero so let us consider this equation in other samples so for in case of other samples the surface tension will be calculated or measured by this equation anyhow we are considering water as the sample so the equation will be 2 pi r gamma this will be the equation number 3 so at upward direction force we have the surface tension formula at upward direction that is a is equals to 2 pi r gamma now let us see what will happen at downward force in the capillary tube so as we discussed at this downward force of capillary tube a countering force is going to involve countering force in perspective of gravitational force here a countering force countering force and that countering force is gravitational force as we discussed this countering force as gravitational force is completely depends on the density of the sample density of sample now let us go in detail about this downward force where the countering force is acting in the capillary tube so as the countering force depends on the density of the sample so the sample will be contains mass into gravity we all know that the mass is equals to volume into density volume into density so in place of mass we can consider this volume into density and as usual the countering force that is gravity here this volume we can write the volume as the area into height area into height so let us substitute the volume factors into the above equation now this equation can be written as area into height 
into density into the gravitational force that is countering force. So, in the mathematical representation area can be written as A H in perspective of height density is rho countering force or gravitational force will be written as G. So, the equation or formula for the area is pi r square. So, we can submit this a value into the above equation now pi r square into h rho g. This can be considered as equation number 4 and this is happens at downward direction. So, this downward and upward both direction force will be actively participates in this capillary raising method. So, at equilibrium state at equilibrium state upward direction and downward direction both should be equals. So, as per the previous discussion, the formula at upward direction is gamma 2 pi r is equals to pi r square rho g. In this, pi pi gets cancelled, r and 1 r from here get cancelled. So, gamma 2 is equals to r rho g. At equilibrium state, the upward force A should equals to downward force that is B. So, A is equals to B. So, we have A value from the above equation gamma 2 pi r B value pi r square pi r square h rho g. Now, these equations will be written as like this pi r square h rho g pi pi gets cancelled r and here 1 r gets cancelled. So, remaining gamma 2 is equals to r h rho g and gamma can is equals to r h rho g by using this equation equation we can calculate surface tension of sample or liquid by capillary rise method. This is in detail about the capillary rise method and let us discuss another method of determination or measurement of surface or interfacial tension that is Dunoy ring method. Dunoy ring method. So, this Dunoy ring method is also known as ring detachment method and also known as tensiometer, tensiometer method. In this Dunoy ring method, the principle involved is the force needed to lift from the liquid is directly proportional to the surface tension or interfacial tension which is created by the liquid or sample. It is very simple to understand the force is equals to or directly proportional to the surface tension or interfacial tension which is created by the sample. Based on this principle, the Dunoy ring method is going to work. And here you can see in this we can have, we will be having a ring. This is the ring portion. This is 
ring this ring is made up of platinum or stainless steel especially it is made up of platinum or stainless steel because to avoid corrosion to avoid corrosion this will be the sample or the liquid which is sample or liquid this ring is attached to a dial reading this is the dial reading dial reading also no, known as tensiometer so this ring is directly attached to this dial reading or tensiometer when the liquid is contact with the ring portion then immediately that will be impacted by the surface tension or interfacial tension and that reading will be calculated by help of this dial reading or tensiometer based on this principle this denoring method is going to work let us discuss the in detail process of the denoring method so first thing we need to do here we need to do here is clean the ring and the next step dip it into sample after dipping now detach the ring from the sample after detaching the ring from the sample now we can calculate the surface and interfacial tension from the dial reading this can be calculated at two parts first part is upward direction of ring the second part is downward direction this upward direction is happens when the ring is detached from the sample this this downward direction is occurs when the ring is dipped into sample so let us see again what will happen at upward direction and what will happen at downward direction first thing is at upward direction so when the upward direction is done then we can take the readings directly from the dial readings dial reading which is attached to the ring which is attached to ring this dial reading is also known as tensiometer as we discussed in the principle itself so at this dial reading we will get the readings as a is equals to dr let us consider this is equation number 1 let us see what will happens at downward direction so this downward direction is happens when we are trying to dip the ring into the sample at downward direction point b here b value will be 2 pi r as we know that the ring will contains two con circumferences this is inner circumference and this will be the outer circumference hence this can be written as 2 pi r into 2 this 2 is from the 
two inner and outer circumferences so finally this can be written as 4 pi r this is considering as equation number 2 at equilibrium state this upward direction and downward direction should be equals to each other so a and b both are equals so d r should be equals to 4 pi r so finally the surface tension tension of a sample that is gamma can be calculated by this formula that is dr upon 4 pi r this is about the denoiring method and next method that is drop weight and drop count method this drop weight and drop weight method is also known as stalagmometer method stalagmometer method this stalagmometer method or drop weight and drop count method is works on the principle called when the sample is need to the principle involving in the stalagmometer method is the sample needs to suck up to mark a and after sucking need to allow the sample to flow down at up to the lower mark b in the stalagmometer as stalagmometer consists two marks mark a and mark b this mark a is considered as upper mark of stalagmometer and this mark b is considered as lower mark of stalagmometer this is the stalagmometer this stalagmometer consists upper mark this is upper mark and b is lower mark here we have a bulb this is this area is a bulb and we will be having capillary tube at the base of this capillary tube we have a small capillary or small capillary or hole by this we can suck the sample up to mark a this is the principle involving in the stalagmometer let us discuss about the process of the drop count and drop weight method so in this the first step again we need to clean the stalagmometer after that suck the sample sample up to upper mark a after sucking now allow to flow down up to the lower mark b now calculate the surface tension of the sample in two different methods first one is drop weight method second one is drop count method drop weight method in this drop weight method we need to compare compare two samples two samples sample 1 and sample 2 so in case of sample 1 that can be written as w1 is equals to 2 pi r gamma so the gamma 1 can be written as w1 upon 2 pi r let us consider this is equation number 1 next in case of sample 2 so 
here the w2 can be written as 2 pi r gamma 2 so this gamma 2 can be written as w2 divided by 2 pi r let us consider this is equation number 2 now we need to compare now compare the equations 1 and 2 equations 1 upon equation 2 this can be written as gamma 1 divided by gamma 2 is equals to w1 2 pi r 2 pi r get cancel gamma 1 upon gamma 2 w1 upon w2 so we need to calculate the surface tension of sample 1 then this can be written as w1 divided by w2 into gamma 2 based on this equation we can calculate the surface tension by drop weight method drop weight method by using stalagmometer in case of drop count method in this method as we discussed here we can be having a bubble and this will be attached to a capillary tube here we have upper mark and here we will be having lower mark this is the capillary so drop count method so initially we need to suck this sample through this capillary up to mark a and now after that we need to follow the same sample to reach up to mark b so in this case while it is reaches to mark b and it will starts to come out from the capillary tube itself so now the drops will be flows down by crossing the lower mark so we need to calculate the drops during this process the gamma value will be written as w into g written as w into g divided by 2 pi r during this we can write the gamma value that is w into g 2 pi r into eta so here this eta indicates the viscosity of the sample so based on this viscosity the number of drops will be decided as we know that w is equals to density into volume so gamma is equals to density v that is volume into g 2 pi r eta the same process can be done in two different sample because we need to compare the different samples in case of sample 1 that is gamma 1 can be written as rho 1 v1 g divided by 2 pi r eta 1 in case of the sample the gamma value that is gamma 2 can be written as rho 2 v2 g that is gravitational force and divided by 2 pi r eta 2 let us consider in case of sample 1 is equation number 1 in sam in case of sample 2 equation number 2 now we have two gamma values at sample 1 and sample 2 now let us compare these two different samples values here in case of sample 1 the volume 2 pi r gravitational forces will be constant so this equation 1 can be written as gamma 1 is equals to rho 1 divided by eta 2 in the second case also volume 2 pi r 
g can be constant so this can be written as gamma 2 is equals to rho 1 divided by theta 2 now we need to compare this two equation 1 and 2 then it can be written as so to know the surface tension of the sample by using this equation we can calculate the surface tension of the sample by drop count method this is about the stalagmometer method or drop weight and drop count method let us discuss the another method of measurement or determination of surface or interfacial tension that is bubble pressure method in this method in this method we are going to use two different capillaries two different capillaries whose radius is different so these capillaries can be considered as capillary a capillary b capillary a can be considered as narrowed capillary narrow capillary wide capillary in this method when the capillaries are introduced in this method we will be having two different capillaries this is capillary b wider capillary and this is capillary a narrowed capillary and the major difference in between these two is is radius in capillary a we have small radius in capillary b we will be having larger radius so these capillaries are attached to a manometer this manometer is used to measure the pressure differences and also the same capillaries are attached to a mercury reservoir and this mercury reservoir is used to find the bubbles based on these bubbles we can calculate the surface or interfacial tension of the particular sample in this bubble pressure method let us discuss the process how it will be works first insert the capillaries both capillaries a and b into the sample and then attach the chamber to mercury reservoir and the same chamber should be attached to manometer here at this manometer we can calculate the pressure differences which is created through the capillaries different capillaries we have in the chamber after this the mercury chamber will create some bubbles initially when the capillary b is opened at this time capillary a will be closed now close capillary b and open capillary a because of this process we can find some bubbles due to the pressure differences in the capillaries capillaries a and b now note down the 
note down the readings of pressure differences delta p values from manometer after this we can calculate the surface tension or interfacial tension by following formula that is AP into 1 plus 0 0.6 R2 DP upon R2 D upon P into G. By using this equation, we can calculate the surface or interfacial tension by using maximum bubble pressure method. In this, A is apparatus constant, P is pressure value that is delta p value which we can get from the manometer here d is the density of density of the sample already we discussed how we can measure the density by help of pycnometer or by help of gravity bottle we can determine the density of any liquid sample. This is in detail about the maximum bubble pressure method. Next, last method of the determination of surface interfacial tension that is Wilhelmy plate method. In this Wilhelmy plate method, again it is quite similar to the Dunoyring method. So here we are going to use a triangular plate triangular plate this method is majorly works on the principle called the force which is required the force which is required to remove the plate from the sample is directly proportional to the surface tension which is created by the same sample. Based on this principle, Wilhelmy plate method is going to work. Let us discuss the in detail process by of Wilhelmy method. First, we need to dip the plate and that plate should be in triangular shape when the plate is dipped into the sample then now the plate will contacts the sample after two to three minutes of time we just need to remove remove the plate from the sample when we are remove this plate from the sample that means the plate will comes to its original position now we can calculate the surface tension of liquid or sample by following formula that is gamma is equals to in this L is length T is 
thickness of the plate w is density of sample so dear students these are the different determination or measurement methods of the surface and interfacial tension hope you understood thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates